Yo, what's going on guys? I'm finally back for my trip, and it was really fun. I didn't get much footage there, as obviously, I couldn't charge the camera once it ran out of battery. So, I got a couple of time lapses and some pictures of some birds. We didn't see many ants, although my friend did actually manage to find and catch a queen on the last day that we were there. Although, we didn't bring it back home. Instead, we just released it back on the island. Now that I'm back, I've gotten lots of messages from people all over Australia who have recently caught green ant queens, otherwise known as Ritetopanera, a fairly common species here in Australia. Unlike Iridomermex bignelli, which are also currently flying, green ant queens are actually semi-claustral, meaning that they require an external source of protein to feed their ever-growing larvae. Which, if you haven't had much experience with raising semi-claustral species, it could be a little difficult. So pretty much this is going to be the first episode of how to raise a right to the banana queen ant. So let's get started. Okay, so the first step is to obviously catch yourself a right to the banana queen, which should be relatively easy right now as lots of them are currently flying. Now that you've caught yourself a queen ant, it's time to create a test tube setup for her. Now this step is pretty important based on whether or not you want to be housed in a test tube setup or a so-called tubs and tubes setup. If you want her in a tubs and tubes environment, then I'd recommend filling the test tube around two thirds or three quarters full with water, as she will use the outworld as a foraging area and won't require as much nesting space. Now, if you'd prefer to keep her in just a test tube setup, this can easily be done by filling the test tube halfway with water. Then the queen will use the extra space provided as sort of an outworld, but it will also allow you to feed the queen without her escaping. Now that you've chosen which environment you want to house the queen in, the next step is to put a small amount of substrate in her test tube. This is because the genus Ritidopanera can't grip onto glass and plastic too well which makes containing them in an outworld easy, but housing them in a test tube a little difficult. The final preparation stage is to put the queen in a dark space within your house. This could mean putting some aluminium foil around her, keeping her in a box, or in my case, using this red acrylic box, which makes the ants think that they are in the dark. Now that the queen is in an ideal environment, what we do now is wait for her to lay some eggs. With my jewel queen colony, it was only a matter of days until they had laid around 10 or so. Although on the other hand, I'm still waiting for my single queen to lay her first batch. So if you guys are having this problem too, you could try feeding her some protein to encourage her to lay some eggs, although I can't guarantee this will work. Once your queen has laid her first eggs, continue to offer her different proteins and sugary substances to keep her happy and healthy. In my experience, the eggs should take around 4 weeks to hatch, although I know many people, including myself, already have larvae, so the next episode on caring for the larvae should hopefully come out next week. Because my jewel queens have laid their eggs first, I'll be using them for the next episodes within this series. The only difference with having a single queen compared to having two will be that there will be less eggs produced, but other than that, raising them is almost identical. Anyway, with that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Ant Invasion, out.